Hey everybody, welcome to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do so. You can follow Steve here and on Twitter. If you'd like, there's some great movie merchandise below. And now, let's go see the Tired Old Queen at the Movies, Steve Hayes. Oh, John, won't you come in? Oh, Johnny, we hadn't done a Joan Crawford movie in a while, so I chose 1947's Possessed, directed by Curtis Bernhardt and starring Joan Crawford, Van Heflin, Raymond Massey, and Geraldine Brooks. Now, Joan had left her MGM contract and signed on with Warners for half the money, and she made a guest appearance dancing with Dane Clark in one of those all-star war propaganda movies. Then she waited a year off salary for the right script and Mildred Pierce came along. So perhaps it's natural. Maybe that's why father... <laughs> and of course she won the Academy Award. Well, while she won the Academy Award, while she was winning it, she was filming Humoresque with John Garfield. And so she was really coming back into her own. Michael Curtis and Mildred Pierce had put her through the pickers. I'm sorry to hear that. I always try to leave a lasting impression. She was determined to prove that she was a good actress. Something happens to a woman when she's wanted. Something dreadful. Betty Davis used to say, you know, well, I'm an actress and Joan Crawford is a movie star. And Joan would say, well, I may be a movie star, but not every good actress can carry a picture. <laughs> so she was looking for properties. Humoresque gave her a romantic melodrama, which she loved, and she loved being on screen with Johnny Garfield. Who's that? I don't know, someone new. Well, with all that talent, he'll probably end up in jail. So the next one that was offered to her was Possessed. What's wrong with me, Doctor? Why do I see things that aren't, that just couldn't be real? Now, this was also a time of message pictures. They were doing all these controversial topics and possessed had to do with mental illness. You're describing schizophrenia, aren't you? You know, they assured Crawford, the director, Curtis Bernhardt said, you know, you can do this, I know you can do this. And she was really coming into her own and feeling like she was an actress and she could tackle this. So she did. And she won her second Academy Award nomination. You'll see. I can be very objectionable. That I can believe. The basic plot is this. The movie opens with this woman walking the streets of Los Angeles in the early morning hours. And she's obviously mentally ill. She's in a trance. She's in a stupor. She's got amnesia. She doesn't know where she is. Finally, she's almost hit by a car. She collapses in a restaurant. And they take her into this hospital. By the time they get her into the hospital, she can't talk to anybody. She can only mumble. So the doctor comes in and says, I've seen this before. It's happening a lot these days. She's in a state of complete catatonia. We've got to get her out of it. So they give her a drug like sodium pentothal or something to bring her out and to make her tell the truth. And then the movie goes into flashbacks. And it turns out that her name is Louise, and she's a nurse, and she's taking care of this man, uh, Dean, played by Raymond Massey, his invalid wife, who you never see, but you just hear her voice. This is Grandma. I'll be with you in a minute. I don't want you to do anything for me. I won't have you touch me. Not after what's been going on between you and my husband. And Jen will say, that's not true. It's not true, you know. That's not true, Mrs. Graham. You know, he's very upset when you're unhappy. Joan is having an affair with David Sutton, who's this uh, architect who lives across the lake, played by Van Heflin. And for him, it's just easy sex. It's just a, an affair. Mm -hmm. It's just a curve. Uh, well, yes, it's a parabola. Now, that is something that a mathematician could fall in love with. She falls emotionally in love with him, and it becomes a tale of obsession. Sometimes I get the feeling that you're, you're choking me to death. Everyone wants to be loved, but no one wants to be smothered. If you don't let me go, I'm not a violent man, but I'll wind up kicking babies, Louise. You gotta pull back here. And that's his attitude towards her. And she's saying, I wish you knew how much I loved you. Love is such an inadequate word for what I feel for you. I, mean, I just love you, David. I wish you just love Don't you love me? Why? Why, David, what have I done? Nothing, nothing. And she's really, really needy. Then she has to go across the lake and pull it together and be the respected nurse. And all of this is building up and building up inside of her. And he drops her. He completely drops her. And it just, just devastates her. Louise, you've got to let go. 
I, I can't love you the way you love me. I never could. At the same time that this happens, the wife dies and there's an investigation and they're not sure if she committed suicide or if she died accidentally, she drowned, what happened? So they bring in an investigation routine and it gets really ugly and nasty. And Dean, Raymond Massey, the husband, is a really nice guy and he has fallen in love with Joan Crawford as she's been taking care of his invalid wife. And he says, look, my wife, this, these things are going to happen. I've always loved you. Will you marry me? I'm aging visibly. I'm not in love with you. She's desperate. She's on the rebound. So she says, well, all right, all right, yes. The important thing is I think I could make you happy. Gradually, you start to realize that she's schizophrenic. She is just jumping personalities all the time. So she marries this guy, and she's got comfortable, and she's not in love with him. So all of a sudden, the daughter comes home who's played by Geraldine Brooks, and she resents Joan, and she thinks that Joan might have killed her mother. What about her? What about your mother? What did he say? He killed her. It wasn't an accident. You killed Be her. Be quiet, don't say you that. You say you could marry my father. Very, very melodramatic. And Joan just says, well, I didn't, and you're being very foolish, and you're hurting your father. And then all of a sudden she finds out that the daughter is going out with David Sutton. He's dating the daughter. And that just puts Joan right over the edge and things begin to build and it's not going to end pretty. Do you think I'm as attractive as David says? You're very pretty. And I'm not going to go any farther. This is the kind of melodrama that Warner Brothers did really so well. It's got the torrid score going on. Curtis Bernhardt Head was a German director. He'd come out of Ufa and he did movies like Conflict with Humphrey Bogart, A Stolen Life with Betty Davis, My Reputation with Barbara Stanwyck. He was really good at melodrama and he really pulled from Joan. And Joan was determined to do well with this. I had no idea it was insanity. Insanity is not a word we like to use, Mrs. Smith. She snuck into a electroshock treatment of a patient when she wasn't supposed to, and the woman who was, who was getting the treatment sued Joan and the studio, saying that Possessed was about her. Joan, this is going to cost the studio a... Jack, I was doing research. That's all she needed to say. And, you know, they at that time, when you're making money, it doesn't matter, so they, under the table, they paid off this woman and she was allowed to get away with it. Joan was feeling her oats at this point. She could kind of call the shots, you know. She pulled Adrian back to do her costumes. I don't have anybody else but Adrian dress me. <sighs> Later on, it was Sheila O'Brien, but at this stage, it was Adrian. Mm -hmm. And then she pulled the Epstein twins who had written Casablanca were on suspension. Jack Warner had gotten angry with them about something, put them on suspension, and she went to his office and she said, I want the Epsteins to come back and write a little bit of extra dialogue for me. He said, Joan, they're on suspension. I want the Epsteins to come back again and write a little extra dialogue for me. Joan, you don't understand. I want the Epsteins back. Mm-hmm. And they came back. But when she got done making this movie, she said, I'll never do anything like that again. You'll never know how much that took out of me. It wasn't real. Of course it wasn't. This is quintessential Joan. If you're a Joan lover, like I am, you are gonna love this movie. It's glamorous, she gets the full treatment, it's dramatic, it's the lighting is noir. It's Joan Crawford, Van Heflin, Raymond Massey, Geraldine Brooks, and Curtis Bernhardt's Possessed. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's An ex of mine once lobby. said to me, you know something, Stephen? When you die, Joan Crawford's life is going to pass in front of your eyes. I think you can love a guy who's right. You can also hate him. It's a thing to eat. The popcorn can't be beat.